Hey guys, um, are you tired of watching drawing videos where the, there's this perfect sketch and then the artist starts filming at the moment they start to put on shading? And you wonder, wait, how did this perfect sketch come about? What about, what about the first lines? What about where, where do they begin? How do they begin? What about that? Because um, I know for me, that's what I often, almost always think when I see these perfect, perfectly shot videos of someone drawing a portrait and the sketch is just immaculate. <laughs> and so I thought I would share something special with you. If you've been following this channel, you might know that I only draw freehand. And I used to do a lot of all that tracing and grid and light boxes and all of that. But I gave that up. Um, actually, I thought about it. My eldest will be 14 in November, and that's two months from now. So, and I haven't done it since, since uh, he was born. So I've been, do I've been doing freehand for, for a long, long time now. And uh, it was a steep learning curve. Not gonna lie about that. But I thought today I would take this, the, the same photo, the same reference photo of, uh, of Evan Peters, um, just because why not? And I'm gonna draw the same photo basically. And I'm going to do it in three different ways. I'm going to do it by tracing, which means I will um, trace from on top of... I'll show you in the video. And then I will do a grid version, and then I will do a freehand version. And just to make sure you don't think that I'm cheating or anything, I will start with the freehand drawing because... Um, Mainly because I prefer it, but also because I want I want the freehand drawing not to be influenced by the fact that then I will then have drawn both the tracing and the grid. And so that if the freehand drawing will become better, um, you know, then you'll be able to explain it with, oh, that's because she traced it first or she did a grid version or whatever. It's not. <clears throat> I'm going to be completely honest and transparent and you'll be seeing everything from start to finish. You can go back and forth and you can see how I will do this. So um, I'm going to start with the freehand first. So um, let's get started. Okay, so before I start, I'm going to show you the photo that I'm going to draw. Uh, and the reason why I picked this one is because it's... Um, it's black and white. That's not why, because I often draw from color reference photos. But it has a lot of contrast. And also it's three-quarter profile. You know, he's like that in it. Uh what's usually the most the 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 less complicated version is the full frontal, like that, like that, right? And then there's the profile, which is also uh challenge can be a challenge and then there's the three-quarter profile like that right and uh <clears throat> that could be just as challenging believe me but i thought i would do that because i really like this the way the light hits the face and he has a really strong profile so um i thought that would be interesting to try and draw with both freehand grit and tracing so, but I'm going to start off with freehand. Okay, let's see how it goes. Wish me luck. Okay, so I'm starting off with presenting some of the tools that I will be using throughout this entire video. You guys know them. Um, I don't need to present them really, right? Because it's pretty obvious. Mechanical pencils, erasers, netted rubber, electrical razor, sharpener. I uh, didn't even use that um, Micron pen there. 
anyway, there's the picture that I want to draw. And um, just opening up this slightly bigger uh, sketchbook, uh, I thought I would use the big one for this video so that I would draw it bigger so it, it would be easier to see on this video. Please bear with me because recording videos and editing them and stuff like that is still very new to me. And I just got this microphone so I'm really scared. Um, I'm really scared of talking into it and sounding like a complete idiot. I hope the sound is good. Anyway, um, yeah, so I want it to tilt the book a little bit, so I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm finding my starting point and I'm usually, like I always do, I start with one eye. And I promised you that I would show you every single step of this drawing process and it really is every single step. Now I sped up this video like I usually do, but I haven't cut out anything unless it's like a, like I take a sip of my teacup or <laughs> something like that. Um, <clears throat> so there's no like, I'm not cheating in any way, I'm not editing out important um, important stuff I'm not doing any of that so um, so yeah anyway now that I am doing this freehand drawing I might as well use this opportunity to talk about what it is about freehand drawing that I like so much because <laughs> um, the list is endless and um, I know I talk a lot about process uh, over outcome or result, or I, you know, the journey before the destination, um, which is a, a, a metaphor you can use um, also in life, because it's not really so much about the destination, it's, it's about enjoying the ride and uh, and uh, and immersing yourself into things that matter um, letting go of your ego and submerging investing yourself whether it's work or love or you know um, yeah that's important and and just like in life and love you make mistakes and you try and fix them. The good part about drawing is that you actually can fix them. Um, sometimes in life that's not always, that can't always be applied, but um, <laughs> let's not go into that. Um, it's just so important not to give up. And um, yes, I've been drawing for a long time, but I also had really long breaks where other things seemed more important. So, you know, there's that. Um, drawing freehand is time consuming. It's a very slow process. Uh, I often need to take breaks um, because you're so much into the details that you can get a little bit lost. It's much like when you've been on the freeway in your car and you get off the freeway and you uh, drive into the city, for example, and you have to slow down. And it just feels like you're going so much slower than you. Um, I'm sure there's a term for it. There's a term in Danish. I don't know if, it's, if there's a term for it in, in English, but it's, you kind of get blind to you know you sort of you sort of lose um, um, sight of how fast you're going when you're going that fast and then when you have to slow down it's um, it's harder 
I'm not very good at explaining that. I'm so sorry. But what I'm trying to say is that because you're so caught up in detail, you need breaks and you need to look at other other things like go for a walk, go out in nature, uh, kiss your uh, significant other, play with uh, your pets or your kids or your friends or <laughs> have a drink or whatever. And then come back and look at it with fresh eyes. I promise that's uh, it will do wonders for your drawing. So uh, yeah, it's time consuming. <clears throat> Look at what I'm doing here. I am uh, rotating the book and this helps me to one, measure the distance from the eye down to the nostril, but also making sure that the lines, that everything is in line. Sometimes it helps to flip the book those 90 degrees. Sometimes flip it 180 degrees. I mean, upside down can also be a help, helpful if you're having doubts about whether or not you're going in the right direction. So, um, yeah. That's a really nice tip. And again, I'm making sure with my pencil that I'm on the right track. You know, is the distance right? Is the is it at the same height as it should be? Sorry about those curls getting in the way. My hair is a little too big. And I leaned over in front of the camera and yeah, S-H-I-T happens, right? So... <laughs> We have to live with that. I'm sure you can if I can. Um, yeah, I should have, maybe I should have sped this up a little bit, but I promised you that I would give you a detailed, oh, full on detailed uh, video of how I do this. I did this drawing. And uh, yeah, I just, I just enjoy this. I, I enjoy the battle and the challenge and the struggle because it's, sometimes it's a struggle and I can't get the likeness or I can't make that nose work or that mouth or those teeth or that hair or that special look or that smirk, um, you know, um, and, and the only thing that works is to keep working. I cannot emphasize that enough. I know I say it all the time, but it's really true. Just don't give up. And you might have overworked a drawing, then just put it like away. Put it in a drawer or, or hang it up on the wall or something, Just, but just don't abandon it completely. Just put it away, put it in the back of your mind, start drawing something else, or like I said, go for a walk, etc. Um, go hang out with uh, friends or family, wherever you prefer, um, and just come back to it later. Um, and, and just accept that things take time. I mean, we live in a world it is so fast paced and we're so used to everything being so fast and on track and you have to do this and you have to do that to to succeed and i mean drawing and and making art or whatever you want to call it being being creative i'd much rather prefer that term is about immersing yourself and you can't just do that like one two three it's um it takes time it takes effort. It takes a little bit of you. So don't rush things. Just take your time and uh, enjoy the process. That's why it's so important to enjoy the process. Because if you're, if you're only focused about the end result. Um, and it's not about not getting a nice result. Obviously, we all want that. But it's not really about that when you're in it. You can always go back and edit it. That's what you do anyway. 
you know, in the final steps of the drawing. You go in and you twerk and you you uh, you resize things or you move a shade or whatever. You you emphasize a shading or whatever. You make these little adjustments. You do that anyway. So there's no need to be judgmental as you're drawing. And look at that. I'm working on the mouth. And I can see now, in retrospect, I can see that I positioned the mouth a little wrong. <clears throat> I will go in and I will change that later on. I remember I did that. This is a speak over that I'm doing, as always, after um, I did the drawing drawings. So, uh, yeah, and there's the jawline, chin and jawline. Now, if you notice, I am actually only using one mechanical pencil for this entire drawing. I originally wanted to start out with, I had, I have two, I've brought, so to speak, two mechanical pencils with two different leads. This one is with uh, a 3B and the other one was with a with an HB, which is a harder lead, so it's lighter. But I found that on this paper, uh, this is Strath Strathmore paper, um, it sort of left dents in the paper. It sort of scratched the paper and um, so, and also you get a lot more done faster with the 3B because you can both sketch with it and you can also do some shading with it. Um, does that make sense? Um, I just feel like it's versatile and uh, it really helps um, because if I have to change pencils uh, in between it sort of takes a bit out of the flow I guess so I usually only at least for, for, for sketching or for like getting a hang of where everything is, mapping the face, I would call it, I use only one pencil or mechanical pencil as I prefer. But there are no rules. Um, it's totally a matter of uh, preferences. Um, now, if you notice, I am again tilting the book and rotating and this is just to make sure that everything is right that I have uh, that I have that my hand hand eye coordination wasn't completely off um, so I'm just checking in to make sure that I was right and if I was wrong I'll just correct it before starting and uh, and drawing too much because there's nothing worse than having done a whole lot of shading and really going into details just to figure out or just to find out damn it, it was way off. Nobody wants that. So I just um, go in once in a while um, and do that. I guess time and experience has taught me that because I made a lot of mistakes um, that I've learned from. And you don't need to do the same. You can just um, hear me out and avoid that. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry that some of his shirt is out of the frame as I'm drawing this. I wasn't super aware of it because the phone, which is my camera, is hanging above me. As you can probably tell from my head sometimes uh, blocking the view. <clears throat> sorry, um, sorry about that. So, uh, so I don't always know that I've if I'm in frame. I apologize for that. Please remember, I'm still very new to this. Just hoping that you guys will benefit from this video and maybe avoid some of the mistakes that I that I did starting out because. Boy, have I done all of them, all of the really bad ones, the really bad ones. 
I'm self-taught. I never went to art school. I never, um, I was never tutored in drawing at all. So I did all the wrongs before uh, finding my own way. This is also why I don't draw in the traditional way. I mean, most artists or portrait artists, or whatever you want to call them, um, usually start off with the outer lines first, like figuring out the shape of the head or the face. Um, and then framing, like like the framing of the face, the framing of the of the of the whole head, uh, angles, uh, bigger lines, and then going from out to in, so to speak, and then working on the details. Whereas I start with the details. I start with the eyes. And here I'm trying a new angle. Uh, <laughs> shooting the video. Um, I have a constant need to experiment and try new things and so I wanted to try a different angle. And now I am placing this uh, reference photo closer to the drawing to sort of figure out uh, what to correct because there's something about that mouth that isn't right. Usually when I draw in my sketchbook my reference is on my phone so it's on a screen it's a small screen that I always keep next to my sketchbook and here for your pleasure <laughs> I printed out the photo and kept it next to the drawing but that's also a bit of a challenge because I'm not used to it. So I need to make sure that everything is, I'm used, I'm used to having the reference closer by uh, because of a smaller screen. So I, um, I'm just trying to adjust and it's really good. Like I said before, you know, rotating the book, uh, flipping it upside down. Uh, moving the reference photo, all of that, taking breaks, please take breaks, all the time. Uh, that's a really, that's really good advice that I didn't listen to enough. I wish I had. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with any technique. I know a lot of people, not a lot, but some people say that my method is, uh, not the right way to draw a face. You should always draw, you should always start with, you know, the bigger shapes, like the the roundness of the head and the face and then the chin and all of that. And then afterwards place the nose, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, etc. But in my opinion, there's, I think that's kind of, bullshit. I'm sorry, but I just, I mean, if I enjoy doing that, then that's the way I like to do it. And no one's gonna, you know, put me in jail for doing that. I mean, who cares? Um, I don't care. If, I mean, is there a drawing police? I just think that it's, it should be up to each and every person to decide what they, what they like, what they prefer. And I don't think that people have something against it. I just think that people um, that people warn against it because it's more time consuming. And that may very well be true because it is time consuming to draw this way. I just prefer it. I don't know why. I think it's because um, it takes more out of me. It's more challenging. And uh, I just like, I also like seeing results from the moment I put down my pencil to the paper. I guess I'm also a little bit um, impatient. I'm a pretty patient person because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do all this drawing. But but at the same time, I want, I want results here and now. And I want to know that my drawing is alive. And what is more alive in a person's face than the eyes? You know, I guess that is why. 
wow, I can't believe I just discovered that. I think I've never really thought about it, but I think that's why. I think I want, I want, I want, um, I want to find the life, you know. Yeah. And I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm talking and please just, I mean, you can just uh, quiet me down <laughs> and just watch the drawing or you can skip um, to the next chapter. Uh, the chapters with uh, the tracing method and the grid method won't be as detailed as this one for many reasons uh, mainly because um, it would just be more of the same I mean all the shading is basically more or less the same and uh, also just because I prefer this um, the freehand method so I enjoy every bit of it and I'm I think I believe that you can tell that my joy of drawing is showing in this part and it's not so um, noticeable <laughs> with the other two methods because I'm simply not enjoying it um, I used to enjoy it <clears throat> since I converted it almost feel like feels like a conversion which is odd but yeah strange so okay I I edited a little bit out there because I got bored with watching myself draw <laughs> so so uh, and here I'm just adjusting the jawline a little bit because I made sure that it was the right angle and uh, yeah and the right amount of shading and notice I'm still only using this um, mechanical pencil with a 3B lead in it I will switch to a black colored pencil the polychromos from Fabri Castell I will do that later on because I just like the uh, the blackness of it and now again I'm adjusting that mouth and I'm using the mechanical eraser I just got it it's it's brand new so I'm it's taking me some adjustment to um, to get used to it <clears throat> and how it works and uh, yeah I'm working on the shading of that mouth of the upper lip and uh, it could take time sometimes right and once again I'm moving the book uh, readjusting the angle to get a new sort of view on it and uh, yeah you see I'm really meticulous at this point because I want it to work I won't give up and uh, had I traced it or you know done it with grit I would not have had these concerns it would be a walk in the park but I would not have learned as much um, in my defense <laughs> so yeah and it's just constantly going back and forth and I'm not saying you should do the same uh, freehand can also just be loose sketches and I do that too sometimes I just want it this video is not about loose sketching this video is about achieving life in a portrait likeness and life um, so and that and that sort of it not always not always definitely not always but in this case uh, I felt like it acquired being meticulous and uh, really going into details and just doing my absolute best but I still use like cross hatching with the pencil I don't go in and I don't smudge or make it soft looking I still want that pencil feeling like the the sketchy um, look to it I like that I want at all cost to avoid being hyper realist doing hyper realism I used to do that also once 
and I got to a point where I achieved hyperrealism. But I was so bored. Again, I was so bored because um, ah, yeah, it's that old talk about perfectionism. Look, there are artists that uh, do hyperrealism, and I am in shock and awe of their talent. They're amazing. They and they really do amazing work, and. I mean, sometimes it's even better than a than a photo. But it was just never something I wanted to do. I don't enjoy it. I just I just don't enjoy it. Um, I like this sketchy feeling. Um, I I just want to move on, and I want to put a little bit of myself, and then move on to the next. That's just my. That's just how I am. Anyway, now I switch to the black colored pencil um, <clears throat> just to, uh, to get more contrast into the portrait. Contrast is, a, is that dance between light and shadow and it just brings in the light, sorry, the life uh, of a drawing. It can really be the distinction between sketch and fully fully finished portrait so um so yeah i really i really like using the black color pencil also because it's matte it doesn't have that shine that graphite often tends to have yeah so just uh, i'm working on the finishing touches in the hair. This hair is interesting because it's sort of dark in the roots and then there are these um, blonde uh, blonde and sort of wavy hair but uh, very dark roots which calls for a lot of uh, a lot of contrast and it's wonderful to draw. I normally hate I don't hate drawing hair, <laughs> I have to say that. I sometimes do. But this was better. And now I'm just cleaning up with my kneadable rubber. Um, just because it's uh, it makes it look better, right? I think it does. Okay, and so now I'm moving on to, that was the free hand. Okay, so you saw me do the free hand drawing and uh, I really enjoyed that because for me, it's not so much about the outcome, obviously, yes, but it's what's more important is the process, which I'm gonna be talking about a lot more in this video. But um, with the freehand drawing, I will already now say that I think I will enjoy that much more than the tracing and the grit version because freehand drawings takes a lot longer, it takes a lot more time uh, because you have to get so detailed about everything and you have to get to know a face. You have to get to know every single detail and every single feature of the face. Um, but it's so rewarding, in my opinion. Anyway, let's see how it goes. The next thing I'm going to do is we'll be tracing. So we'll see how that goes. You ready? I don't know. How, I don't know about me, but I'm just going to jump head first right into it. Cause I love a challenge, don't you? So yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, okay, so before I start on the trace drawing, I'm giving this one some 
fixative, which is like a varnish that I spray on. And uh, make sure it's dried off and put it aside. And then I take my reference photo. And because I don't have, well, I have a light box, or my son does. I don't use it anymore. He does sometimes. I, I have a light box, but the book is not, it's not manageable. I can't use that. So I'm, instead I put this, uh, a lot of uh, graphite on the back side of this uh, piece of paper. And then I will take my heart pencil and I will draw on top of the photo. And then that will leave a mark on the paper. Um, and I will know where everything is. So that's how I do this tracing. Um, and the second I started doing it, it felt just like the old days. Um, but not in a, not in a good way. I mean, I, rem I, I felt like everything was coming back to me. I remember I used to do this, but it became very clear to me that there was no joy in it. Anyway, not the kind of joy I find in drawing today. And the interesting thing is, I realized, is that ever since I started doing freehand drawing, I can see when I when I go back and look at my sketchbooks, etc. I have been drawing a lot more since I started doing freehand drawing. That is really interesting to me. Um, so yeah, okay. So that's the, the rough sketch that I'm doing. And uh, I am now writing traced and freehand <clears throat> just to make sure that there's no misunderstanding. Um, so from here on, I will just um, sort of strengthen my lines and uh, start shading. Um, but it feels like I'm, I'm rendering a photo, which is basically what I'm doing. Now again, I will not, I refuse to judge people who use this method. I will not because I learned a lot from it and kids and very young very young people can learn a lot from using this method. You know, uh, just like I did, uh, tracing your favorite Disney characters or something like that. That was super fun. If you had a light box or, um, or just a window, really, um, or the method that I used with uh, putting graphite on the back side of a printed photo. Um, so I will, I will not, um, talk bad about it. It's just no longer for me. It, it's not interesting for me anymore. So you might ask then why the F are you doing it for this video? I'm doing it because I wanted to revisit it and to figure out what would be the difference between, you know, doing it freehand, doing it traced, and doing it with grid? Is there anything, is there a visible difference? Would it make a difference? Um, and what is that difference? And do I still, would I still prefer doing freehand drawing? Because I don't know. At this point in the process where I'm doing this, I don't know for sure. Um, I know that the process, for sure, I enjoy doing the freehand process much, much more. Because it feels like I'm playing. It feels like I'm, you know, letting myself loose. Here, everything is rigid. Everything is a cut out plan. It's like a, a cookie cutter. You know, the, uh, the, the, all the details are already in place, which for me is the fun part. The shading is a necessary 
And it's also fun, but it's not as fun as figuring out where everything goes. You know, um, the features, the personality of the person. That's, that's what's interesting to me in a portrait, not rendering. Um, and obviously there's a lot of likeness also in shading. Um, but don't get me wrong. This is a, uh, this feels like it's been played out beforehand. I don't know how to explain it in English. It, it just feels like it's, it's dull. It's dead. It's a little, it's a little dead. There's no, uh, there's no real challenge in it. I mean, there can be if you're, if you're someone young and you're starting out and it's not, I'm not saying it that I'm better than anyone else. It's definitely not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I've drawn a long time and I just need, I need to do things in a different way. And so here I am with the trace drawing, uh, again, trying a new angle and uh, using this black colored pencil and just emphasizing the lines and strengthening the shading and uh, yeah. And obviously the liking is more spot on, if you will, because it's actual, I actually trace the drawing, the drawing. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a copy, right? In some, to some extent, it's a copy of the drawing. Uh, there's no uh, interpretation. There's, uh, there's no freedom in it. There's no, um, there, there are no artistic, uh, freedom. There's no like room for playing or for interpreting or for like freestyling. It's all there. It's just been mapped out and I just, I'm just emphasizing the lines. And I'm bored sick. I have to be honest. I'm bored. I really am. Uh, <laughs> and I don't, I actually stop at some point because it gets boring. Um, I'm just, I'm fed up. I'm fed up and there's no joy in it. And I just, I can't wait to end this. Um, and it's not because I already drew this, this photo. That's not it. It's because I have no, there's no room for me. There's no room for, for, for playing, for having fun. There's no, there's no challenge. And I, I don't even bother drawing his shirt for real. I'm just like, yeah, I'm giving up. Okay, that was tracing. God knows I hated that, as you could tell. Uh, that was not, that was not enjoyable for me at all. Um, I can't believe that I did that. I used to do that. I didn't do it a lot, but I did it every now and then. And um, especially with commissioned portraits, these 13, 14 years ago. Um, and ugh, it was so boring. It's so boring. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, like I say, I don't judge anyone who does it. You can learn a lot from it. I learned a lot from it, but I prefer freehand for so many reasons. Okay, grid time. Wish me luck. I hope this will be less painful, please. Wish me luck. Okay, so I have prepared this paper. I don't know if you can see, but it has these lines, centimeter each and across and I'm going to draw this on the next page but I need to prepare this page also with lines or dots so yeah that's coming up in a little while 
Okay, so here you can see that I have drawn the grid on the page where I want the finished portrait to be. And now I'm just um, placing my reference photo next to it so that I can... And with grit, you know, you can, you can actually decide exactly where you want it to start. So, and then I just go, you know, I just follow along. And uh, obviously this, this um, video has been sped up. I think this is 300%, so it's three times as fast as, as, as it would be naturally. And later on it's a lot more because I get bored of watching myself draw this way. But you get the idea, you know, um, of working within the grid. You can work from, from, from uh, each cell to the other. By cell, I mean these squares that are, in this case, one centimeter by one centimeter. Um, yeah. So, again, it feels a bit like rendering. Um, and it also feels like I am working... Um, I don't know, it feels like, I, I feel like I'm being an architect or someone that just fits everything into uh, these boxes. It's, it's, again, it's rigid. It's very unfreeing. It's very, um, it feels very, very like the opposite of creative. You know, th there's no choice. There's no choice. Everything is um, is lined out for me. I don't have to make a choice. I can just sit back and follow along. And now this is the part where I really speed things up. And I am getting rid of... Because I now, at this point, I got so tired of the grid. So I started erasing it. I just And I wasn't even half finished. You know? Not even with the overall sketch. I was just so fed up <laughs> with the grid that I just started erasing it. Just get out of my sight. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Deep breath. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, very, very speed up. Sped up. I just can't wait to get this over with. I mean, I do see that you have a lot of control. I mean, the grit really gives you control. It sort of gives you an idea of, this is me drawing, but I have these guidelines. And I will say that grit for, if you wanna learn how to draw, then grit is definitely better than tracing because there is that amount of choice. Um, Whereas tracing is just rendering and nothing else. But grid is still amazingly, unbelievably boring. In my opinion, let me em emphasize that. And again, I don't judge anyone who does this. Because again, again and again, I can say I learned a lot from doing, from working with grits. I did. I learned a lot about proportions. You know, um, distance between eyes, uh, um, lines of the mouth go out to, you know, for instance, the corner of the eye or all of those basic things. Um, but again, you can see here, I am actually giving up on this drawing. I'm not even finishing it because I'm already so sick of it. I'm just erasing uh, the grid here because I'm so frustrated by this point. Right. Um, yeah, that was um, terribly boring. I felt like an architect or almost, or like someone, uh, it didn't feel, there was, there, there was no flow. There was no like, it's so predictable. It's so um, rigid. 
and um, there's nothing of me in it. That's what I don't like about it. I have not regretted that I uh, that I went for freehand drawing. It's uh, it's just a lot more exciting to me. It's uh, yeah. So that's a no on tracing and a no on grid. But see for yourself. Uh, it's not really about the outcome. Like I said, it's about. It's really about just the process. And what I love about drawing is the flow and the immersion into drawing. Like you forget everything else. You are in your moment. You're in the zone or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. But you are a little bit lost in it. You're a little bit seduced by it. You're a little bit off, yet you've never been more on because you're so invested and so engaged and so immersed, right? And I love that. I love that. I'm sorry, I just do. I really... That's what's special about drawing for me. That's the whole point of drawing. Also because you discover things about yourself when you draw that way, because you have to put some of yourself into it. There's no, there's no wheelchair. There's no, no crutches. You know, you, you have to do everything by yourself. And all there is, is you and your pen pencil and your hand-eye coordination or whatever you want to call it that's all there is and uh honing in on that i mean just perfecting that craft that is i will it also the fact that it will never be perfect i will never be able to draw perfectly that is freaking amazing that's that's what i love about it I will never be I will never be able to render a perfect image because I'm not perfect no one is and guess what that's the beauty of it it's much more personal it's much more lived and breathed because it flows through me. It's not just something that I do and it's only there on paper. It's only surface. It's only superficial. No. When you freehand draw, you interpret. It gets into you and out through your hands. Whether or not it's art, that's not up, that, that's not up to me to decide. I, I, I don't really worry about that. I just think about the process and I feel blessed to, I don't know if I feel blessed, but I feel really lucky. I feel, I'm just happy because drawing gives me so much joy and I wish that for you too. Please don't give up. Please don't ever give up. Just. Just keep going. You got this. You got this. Okay. So let's look at these drawings. So if you remember, if you remember, I did a freehand drawing. It says freehand. And I did a traced drawing. Let me just check that everything is in frame. Woohoo. There we go. There we go. And um, then I did a grid drawing, which is here. Uh, <clears throat> it shouldn't be about grading these drawings. Obviously, I mean, it, it's arguable. There's probably more likeness in the traced drawing as well as the grid drawing. Because it's literally, it's more... It's more a rendering than a drawing. 
experience for me. And yet there are differences between the traced one and the grid one. I guess the traced one is the one that's more accurate most accurate when it comes to likeness. Yet in my opinion, if I was to share my opinion, I hope my humble opinion is okay. Um, I would prefer the, I prefer the freehand drawing. And I will tell you why. I think it has more flow. It has more life in it. And maybe that's just a reflection of uh, how I felt when I drew it. And because my experience with drawing it is much better than the experience I had with tracing the drawing and doing it with grid method. But that just emphasizes the whole point, which is you cannot really, I mean, when you draw freehand, you have, you put a lot of yourself in it and it becomes a wholehearted effort. You know, you put yourself into it. Um, and you can't really hide. It's much more honest. Tracing a drawing doesn't feel like drawing to me at all. It used to do, but it doesn't anymore because I have moved away from it, so to speak. Um, it feels like rendering, if that makes any sense. It feels like I'm just copying. And like I said, I will never judge. I will never judge people who use this method. I learned a lot from it when starting out, uh, as well as I learned a lot from the grid method when I started out. Grid methods, um, the grid method, I will say, uh, I, I always compare tracing to a wheelchair, well, where everything, like an electrical wheelchair, where you're just, you know, you're transported and you don't have to do anything almost. You just go where the lines lead you, so to speak. And I always compare the grit method to crotches because you have to do some of the work. Um, you have to figure out um, some things, but you still have help from the grit. And if you want to learn how to walk on your own and you've been doing tracing, maybe you should switch to grit method <clears throat> and then you know, do the, instead of it's one by one centimeter, it could be an inch by an inch. And that, that sort of, that means that you have to, that you have more freedom and that you have to put a little bit more of yourself, a little more guessing. And okay, free hand is free hand. I still do some uh, measuring. I mean, I measure with my pencil but I mostly use my hand-eye coordination. I do measure with my pencil though, as you've seen in the on the video, but I don't do it a lot. I just do it once in a while to make sure I'm not off, off track. So um, I don't know about you. Will, you. will you share with me in the comments um, which one you prefer? I know I haven't finished the grid method and the tracing method ones, <clears throat> and maybe the trace one would be better in likeness, but a portrait to me is not just about likeness. It's a lot more than that. It used to only be about likeness, but damn it, to me, Likeness is up there. I mean, it's up there. It ha There has to be likeness. But there also has to be life or soul or mm, energy. Energy, man. That's, that, that's what it has to be. There, there has to be energy. And when I look at this, to me, there's no energy. This... No energy. It's dead. It looks like my old drawings. They look like my old drawings. This, in my opinion, it's not perfect. It's far from perfect. It's nowhere near perfect. But it's much more lived because I struggled with it. 
I fought with it. I worked it up from the ground. So it means a lot more to me. And it has a lot more, in my opinion, it just has a lot more life. I will stop babbling. Um, yes, definitely stop babbling. What do you think, guys? Tell me in the comments. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This video was my most ambitious and crazy and huge in, in all kinds of ways and took a long, long time to shoot and to edit. So please, 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 can I ask you to like and subscribe and comment. I love your comments. You're so sweet and you're so creative and gorgeous questions and gorgeous reactions. I love it. All is welcome here with me. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time.